Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about how to make a slab bowl using a slump mold. It's actually one of our more simple assignments. All you're really doing is taking whatever mold you're going to be using and draping a slab in there. You can stamp, you can treat the rim, you can add feet, but for the most part the process is relatively easy. I'm going to walk you through it. To be successful with this, you're going to need a rolling pin and some sticks, depending on the size of your bowl, anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch. And a cutoff wire comes in very handy. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom the camera in. We're going to go ahead and start. Okay, so I've gone ahead and rolled out a nice slab. This slab is, is actually a little bit more than a quarter inch and less than a half. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this over. The objective here is to get this slab into this wooden bowl. This is a beautiful porous wooden bowl that has a slight ovoid shape. I can actually use this as a hump mold when I'm putting the slab on the top or as a slump mold, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to get this on here. And you can see I have quite a bit of excess all the way around the edge. And that's a good thing, because I'm going to be slumping this down in there, and actually, if I cut it flush now, I might sink down in. Just letting gravity do the work here at the beginning. And I'm going to use a rib and a tiny bit of water. I love these flexible metal ribs. Some people really love the uh, rubber ones. And I'm just gently going to start working this down until till I feel it touching the bottom. Right now it's really, really loose. I can tell it's floating. And I'm picking the edge up of this to help it fall down in. And I'm doing a combination of pushing it down in and, and uh, stretching it. Feeling it in contact almost everywhere now. Yeah, I think I got it all the way in there. Now this is all excess clay. I'm gonna take this off and go ahead and reuse it. Using a wire tool is kind of perfect for this. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it flush. <laughs> it's getting away from me a little. I'm going to hold on to it and use my cheese slicer. You can see how the cheese slicer is just really a great tool for this. Just like any decent ceramic object, you have to really treat the rim really can't just leave it cut edge like that. Now's the time where you can do any stamping if you're going to do that, or texture, colored slips. I'm going to be treating this rim, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp a little ways down the side. Let's do it right here. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room. Now, this is a great time to stamp because I'm pushing against the mold. My stamp is just um, simply carved lines and, and it's a bone dry. Ideally you'd bisque your stamps. Okay, so this is all I'm going to do right now. This has to go into a, a leather hard state to pop off. 
Remember, clay shrinks. Most clay shrink up anywhere from five to seven percent, some even eight percent, from plastic wet to um, leather to, to bone dry. So leather hard is going to shrink several percentage points. This is going to release a little bit. You're going to see a little crack all the way around, and it should just pop right out. Some people use compressed air to get them out, but we're going to go ahead and let this dry, and then uh, we'll finish up the rim. Okay, we're back. My bowl has been outside drying for about an hour. It's actually the one question I get from students all the time that I, I can't answer. It's, um, they say, how long do I put it outside to dry? And I just can't answer because it totally depends on the heat, depends on the humidity, depends on the wind. But I, what I do tell them is rotate it 180 degrees every 10 to 15 minutes so the sun and the wind just doesn't dry it too much on one side. Then it gives you all kinds of trouble and potentially cracks it. Anyway, you can see that it's dried quite a bit. It's actually shrank about an eighth of an inch down all the way around the side. That tells me it's about ready to go. And I, I can also just feel that uh, it's leather hard. So it should just pop right out of here. I've taken a little bit of wet clay and put it on a Lazy Susan, or just keep it on the table. That's gonna support this round edge for now. It's also my opportunity to go ahead and look at the bottom. I have a couple little creases here I could fill. First thing I need to do, ultimately, is just finish this rim. What I don't want to do is leave a sharp edge with any cut edge with a slab. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's on the wheel, whether it's hand-built, coil-built. You just don't want to leave any hard edges. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and smooth that down and what I found is a really great tool for that is just one of these simple um, sure form wraps that are designed for plaster and you know if it's the right consistency because it comes up in these perfect little shavings so I'm just holding it at the, at the angle I want and just lightly applying pressure these tools are designed as a pull tool only it really doesn't cut at all if you push it but they do make them all shapes and sizes. Okay, so it leaves a pretty rough edge. Now if you want it to be smooth and continuous, you can just take, start with a damp sponge. And I'm just gonna take my finger and just sort of work that edge. Some people also use like a chamois or um, you know, cut piece of plastic. Okay, it's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is take this little area and just make a little notch. That's just going to lead my eye up and around the corner. And, and I just say, you know, why not? Just a little bit down. I'm going to try to cut that out. I'm just going to... It's pretty sharp, so I'm going to take that and soften it just a little. I want it to be visually sharp right there, but not physically. The body of the bowl is done. This is essentially finished. What I need to do now is figure out what I want to do with the foot. And in this case, it's a really nice, simple, shallow bowl. I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to put a tall foot on it. And you can also you know, put like a coil foot on these, raise them up a little bit. If I could have put a really tall foot to make it more of a pedestal type of bowl. But what I'm going to do is just ever so lightly tap this down against the table. See, I've got a really nice, very barely visible flat spot. It's fairly stable. I'm 
what I'm gonna do now is just take the shear form, just kind of work that bottom in all directions. I've had students get pretty, pretty happy with these shear forms and they're literally carved right through the side of their pots. look straight across that edge it's pretty flat and it's really elegant and simple this really doesn't need anything else you can put color slip in there and paint oxides but that all could happen when it comes to glazing as well so this is a really really simple project and you're going to have a lot of fun with it. You can find these bowls just about anywhere. Or you can make your own hump molds, slump molds, any shape. You can go to a thrift store oftentimes and get some really nice bowls for almost nothing. So it's worth a shot. And I hope this helps. Happy slabbing.